Bad news, everyone. <laughs> the video I made reacting to The Chase and Bitterworth was copyright claimed. I'm pretty sure that it's someone at Viacom Germany, randomly, because where it said copyright material, the names of the episodes were in German. What's even weirder than that, and what, what makes me more upset, is that the last video, I uploaded it and scheduled it, and it got flagged before it was even public. So how the heck did Viacom Germany find it to review it and terminate it? But as much as I really want to complain about it endlessly, it's probably more pragmatic just to figure out a better way forward. Since things have been going well recently, I've been including more and more footage from the show, and so as a result of these copyright claims, I'm gonna have to scale that back a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, we'll just do our best and uh, let's get started with the next episode. This seems like a two-parter because I have it as one video file. The Serpent's Pass. How do you say that in German? It's so creative how they use these water bending skills. I remember when the show began, I was kind of cynical about all these bending powers. I was like, oh, why can't you just do this? Why can't you just do that? Which I'm guessing is a common reaction to it, but They've done a great job with it overall. And I'm really excited to see what it looks like when Aang has all four, <laughs> all four elements. Because even though he's learned water and, I guess, earth now to, to some extent, he, he pretty much sticks to air. 5,000 year old maps from the spirit library. Just splash some water on him. Sorry. I feel like they just aged up Katara a lot. It looks like the only passage connecting the south to the north is this sliver of land called the Serpent's Pass. I mean, it's not like we have Appa to fly us there. Oh yeah. Plot-wise, I think it's an interesting development for them to have to travel on foot. So far they've had kind of a convenient life in terms of getting around. I know I was upset about losing Appa before, but I just want to focus on getting to Ba Sing Se. Is it just me or did that seem a little bit insincere or hollow? Hello there, fellow refugees. I hope they don't sing any more songs like Secret Tunnel. Who would have thought after all these years I'd return to the scene of my greatest military disgrace as a tourist? I'm curious about Iroh's story too, because he seems he's come to terms with everything in his life. That doesn't mean he's not sad about things, but I want to see if there's anything left for him to learn. Tired of living like this, aren't we all? My name's Jet. Oh, this guy. <laughs> still around, huh? Still kicking? I hear the captain's eating like a king while us refugees have to feed off his scraps. You want to help us liberate some food? I'm in. Jet and Zuko, I don't know how I feel about that. Say what you will about Jet, but he's a man of action. <laughs> He has no shortage of ideas or initiative. What he lacks is, like, everything else. He's just so unstable. Zuko also is unstable. I feel like the two of them together is a recipe for disaster because they'll end up feeding on each other's craziness. Sometimes we get attracted to people who share our flaws, and it feels so good at first because you have someone who doesn't judge you and who allows you to give in to your more negative qualities. The problem with that is it creates an incentive for you to not want the other person to change or not want the other person to get better. If your relationship is based on loneliness, you don't want the other person to develop self-confidence because you're worried that they'll leave you. And if you are Jet meeting Zuko, you want to pull Zuko down into the depths with you because you want someone to share that misery with you. The saying misery loves company is a cliche for a reason. It's really hard to elevate yourself to something better than where you are. It's way easier to pull other people down to your level. It's a really nice way to not feel responsible and not feel guilty about your own patheticness. <laughs> that sounds pretty harsh, but that doesn't mean your friends can't have weaknesses. Part of being a good friend is being supportive and helping people have the strength to confront their weaknesses. But I think there's a big difference between healthy support through their flaws and forming relationships based on a mutual flaw. Well, let's see what's going to happen with Zuko and Jet. I have no idea. No vegetables on the ferry! Security! Oh! Is it the cabbage guy from before? This guy can't catch a break. Passport. He's the avatar. I see 50 avatars a day. Those are pretty legit. At this point, if it was me, I would airbend because we all know what that means. Next! Bureauc Ugh. Of course, there would be something about bureaucracy right after I get these copyright claims. I should say that I'm a little bit biased in this because as a person, I constantly struggle with authority. I recognize that that's largely a personal issue. But trying to put that aside... I think that there is something wrong with taking rules too seriously to the point where you think the rules are the virtues in themselves. I think some people are attracted to this kind of job because they feel powerless to shape their own lives. And so what they do is they look for artificial ways they can impose their will on others to make themselves feel better about their impotent lives. 
I'm getting a little worked up. It's understandable in some sense because there are so few things we have power over. We don't really know how we would act when we when we got it. People who end up in these positions like this lady, they may actually be reasonable people for the most part, but the position does something to their behavior. When you're in that situation, it's always easy to find a reason to justify acting like that. For example, if you work in customer service and there's one question that you get asked every day by 10 people, it's easy to get so bitter and hateful. To the person asking you, it's the first time they're asking and it's a legitimate question. To you, it's the 10,000th time someone in this generalized group has asked you the same question. So it's super irritating. It's like, why are people so stupid? Yeah, okay, let's let's move on before I go nuts. I'll take care of this. Oh, I'm excited to top stepping up. Do it, Top. Show her what you got. You gotta move that rock. My name is Top Beifong and I'll need four tickets. Oh, the golden seal of the flying boar. Oh, that's right. Not only is she Earth Nation, but she's an aristocrat. Fanboying continues. Top is just the best member of this party. What can't she do? It is your pleasure. Oh. This document is so official. I guess it's worth four tickets. Tickets and passports, please. Is there a problem? I've seen your type before. Probably sarcastic, think you're hilarious, and let me guess, you're traveling with the Avatar. Is that, uh, uh, Warriors of Kyoshi? Maybe you remember this. Yeah, oh, Suki, right, sorry. We were just in your home. We saw Foaming Mouth Guy. It was great. When you just fly across on Appa? Appa is missing. Are you doing okay? No, he's not. He really isn't. I'm doing fine. Did everybody stop worrying about me? Someone took all of our belongings. I'll talk to the lady for you. No passports, no tickets. My blood is boiling. If I just gave away tickets willy-nilly to anyone, there would be no more order. And you know what that means. No more civilization! It's a little bit of a caricature, but it's based on something real. There are people who really believe that this is the way things have to be, and if we don't follow the rule, everything will be completely destroyed and, and we won't have civilization. What if we gave them our tickets? No, but next! Well, at least we get to see Serpents Pass. I'm not complaining. I'm coming too! I hope she doesn't turn into the sun or something. It says... Abandon hope. How can we abandon hope? That's all we have. <laughs> they spotted us! Oops, I bet they regret that. Suki, are you okay? Thanks, Thanks Toph. Yeah. Damn, no problem, Sokka. Exactly. What the hell? She's so underappreciated. People fight with her. They don't bank her. Damn boy, continue. Suki, you shouldn't sleep there. I'm fine. Stop worrying. Wait! Oh, never mind. I thought I saw a spider. Damn, he's got some baggage because he lost his girlfriend to the moon. You saw what I did out there. I hated feeling like that. But now you're not letting yourself feel anything. I know sometimes it hurts more to hope, but you have to promise me that you won't stop caring. I think it's a natural state of growth to realize you have a problem. You identify some flaw in yourself and then you, you shut down. You're like, oh no, this is terrible, and you pull way back. But the result ends up being just as bad because you've gone from one extreme to the other. Something happened at the North Pole and I couldn't protect someone. I lost someone I cared about. He was smart and brave and funny. Who is this guy? Is he better looking? It is you, stupid. He was watching. I can't. What a pushover. <laughs> All jokes aside, I like how both Aang and Sokka are dealing with loss in this episode. Trying to figure out how to manage themselves and their feelings. Smellaby, that's an unusual name for a young man. Maybe it's because I'm not a man. Yeah, I was about to say. Girl. Still an unusual name though, either way. You're right. It doesn't matter what other people think. Thanks, Longshot. <laughs> I've done some things in my past that I'm not proud of, but that's why I'm going to Bossing City for a new beginning. Wow, maybe Jet has his own arc. That's cool. I believe in second chances. Cool. And yeah, I think Ira's 100% right. Just knowing that that's a thing that's possible or believing that's a thing that's possible is the bridge to actually starting it. That's when the hardest work begins and it's kind of terrifying in itself because if there is hope for me, I have a lot to do and it's a little bit overwhelming. There's no getting up easy. You gotta do difficult things. Speaking of hope, we've seen her do this before in the swamp. It's Rayquaza. <laughs> There's so many ways that can use water. <laughs> Top, come on, it's just ice. Oh yeah, she has no shoes. I'm gonna stay on my little island where I can see. Ah! You're doing great. Follow the sound of my voice. It's hard to ignore. You're almost there. Ah! Oh. Help! 
Can she not swim? Oh no. Coming, Tom! Oh, Sokka, you saved me. <laughs> it's me. Oh, you can go ahead and let me drown now. The Southcasts have to stick together. Being on your own isn't always the best path. I guess maybe I was too hasty in tearing down the potential of their relationship. I think that anyone that you are drawn to probably has something that you could learn from. Maybe they actually can get strength from each other. That'd be cool. Hopefully they don't pull each other down into the abyss. So, you want to go see the baby, or are you going to faint like an old lady again? <laughs> no, no. And he's just moping. Mopey Ang. She's beautiful. I've been going through a really hard time lately, but you've made me hopeful again. I know what I want to name our baby now. Hope. And that's the theme of the episode. Aang is afraid to hope because hoping means pain and fear. Sokka is afraid to hope for the same reason. Zuko and Jet are hoping for a fresh start. A lot of hope. But really, I was just running away from my feelings. It's reminded me how I feel about Appa and how I feel about you. Oh, sweet. I'll find Appa as fast as I can. I just really need to do this. Say hi nice. to that big buzzball for me. That's great. I don't think this is necessarily what they're going for, but just something that I thought about watching that. I feel like sometimes in the worst moments of life, thinking about it endlessly is pointless and in some cases harmful. The thing I find that helps me the most when I'm going in this emotional downward spiral is just to do something productive, like take a productive action. It doesn't even have to be related to the thing I'm worrying about. Just doing anything productive for my life immediately takes me out of that moment and makes me think about the future which is sometimes helpful, keeps me busy, makes me feel accomplished. I'm gonna go save Appa Ang has a totally different feeling, a much cooler feeling than I'm gonna sit here and mope Ang. So you came along to protect me? I just got carried away and before I knew it, I... You talk too much. I can't decide if Saka's smooth or not. He has moments of awkwardness and moments of greatness. <laughs> Don't have a lot of time. Nice. Well, this is a two-parter, so let's keep going. The drill. Oh, the drill. I get it now. Here we go. But just to be on the safe side, May and Ty Lee, take the Earthbenders out. Yeah, I feel like the Earthbenders could come up with something to stop that drill. Attack! They should open the Earth, create a giant crater. I love how she's smiling as she flips through the air. Uh, Man. Wow, so I really just slapped that Earth King. How are we gonna stop that thing? Why are you all looking at me? <laughs> you're the idea He's the smart guy. one, yeah. Come on, Sokka. May I just say, you're like a flower in bloom. Your beauty is intoxicating. I'm gonna forget I saw that. Me too. What do you think, Longshot? I can respect that. <laughs> Longshot, man. Why is beyond words? Two girls ambushed us. One of them hit me with a bunch of quick jabs, and then she cartwheeled away. <laughs> Tylee, Ty yeah. it's like she takes you down from the inside. Oh, oh, oh! Yes? That's how we're gonna take down the drill! You can always count on Sokka for a good plan. Run! Look at that dust cloud. It's so... poofy. Poof. Tylee seems super cool. There was the video where we first met Tylee and I said that I found that to be humanizing for Azula. In hindsight, I think that actually it's all just Tylee and her exuberance, her spirit. It just colors everyone around her positively. No way am I going in that metal monster. I'll try to slow it down out here. Toph just keeps doing her own thing by herself. I love it. I need a plan of this machine. Some schematics that show what the inside looks like. Where are we gonna get something like that? Yeah, or, yeah, I was about to say, or you can just start smashing. <laughs> Coldest team bossing say is more like it. That's the first time I've seen him angry. But I don't think you want me in your gang. Think of all the good we can do for these refugees. I said no. Have it your way. What was that? Hey! What are you doing firebending your tea? Oh, that was pretty sharp of Jet to catch that. <laughs> is that a thing that can happen? <sighs> yeah, that's not a great... Plan. It is the Avatar and friends. Mm. Hey. Sokka's killing it. He has so many options now. We have to follow them. She can shoot all the lightning she wants at me. I am not going in that wall sludge juice. Tylee's definitely the, the cooler of the two. I like Tylee a lot. She's great. <laughs> yeah, don't let her come near you. Shooting rocks down there! And that's reasonable. 
Don't forget to breathe. You know, I am just about sick and tired of you telling me what to do all day. Just bend the slurry, woman! You guys need some help? Talk. Help me plug up this drink. Yes. Perfect for both of them. Momo, get out of here! They still haven't really fought. They, they had that meeting in the desert, but it was mostly Aang just evading. Although, we did see Azula almost be able to handle everyone against her at the same time, so... Nice. I mean, no, that's terrible. <laughs> you gotta appreciate talent, no matter who it is. Nice. It's so good to see him using other elements besides wind. I feel like he doesn't use his teachings enough. <laughs> that was great. Now all I need is a... Actually, that is what I needed for once. It's great to see his hard work actually pay off. Dive bomb? Do it. Yes. I'm glad that Azula made it back just in time to watch this happen. Nice. Yeah, get out of there. That was great. That was very well conceived and very well made. I'm glad Tylee's alive. Those guys are fire vendors. What a handsome baby. Man, the Fire Nation has these high-tech gadgets, and the Earth Nation still has trains like Fred Flintstone. Good effort out there today, Team Avatar. That was a great payoff for all the build-up we've had of them traveling to Bossing Say. We had two great episodes, one a little bit more character-driven and the other very action-driven, which is good. Like I said before, the action is always so much more enjoyable when you care about the characters. It's really coming together nicely, especially with Pop in the party. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.